Fresh off of self-destruction in Dallas, the Atlanta Falcons look to bounce back from their first loss of the season as they take on all-pro quarterback Patrick Peterson and the Arizona Cardinals. Falcons opening drive, Cardinals bring the blitz, but Ray Gilbert finds a cross in Kyle Woods, who has the first down and a 17-yard gain just shy of midfield. Three plays later, Falcons across midfield now, and Gilbert throws a screen out to Devontae Freeman, who cuts it back inside and has 15 yards and another Atlanta first down. And on the following play, Gilbert with the fake and looking to throw stands in and wants the end zone where Kyle Woods hangs on to the catch through contact and the 26 yard score puts the Falcons on the board first as they take a 7-0 lead. Atlanta gets it right back and on second nine from their own 21 it's McCole Hardman on the jet sweep and he's going to pick up 11 yards and a new set of downs. Next play and Gilbert fakes the give, steps up in the pocket and fires to a wide open Austin Hooper for 24 yards across midfield. Then facing third and three, Gilbert throwing a again and he goes right back to Hooper who has the 14 yard catch to convert first and 10 from the 11 now and Gilbert finds the third string tight end Ronald Baldwin for the 11 yard score and to celebrate Baldwin does his best all Madden impression warping five yards backward and says holy sh where the f am I did I die ah! First play of the ensuing drive and Kyler Murray looks to throw before taking off and he's going to spin and pick up eight yards but the story here is Murray remains down on the ground following the tackle and the Cardinals quarterback would head to the locker room holding his wrist to comfort his bruised sternum and he would not return. Three plays later and Arizona goes to the ground and crosses midfield as David Johnson picks up 10 in the first down. Three plays later again and the Cardinals refuse to let their backup throw a pass as Chase Edmonds takes the give on a third and 14 draw which leads to an Arizona on a punt and on Atlanta's first play it's Gilbert to Calvin Ridley for 14 yards and a first down to start the drive two plays later Gilbert throwing again and he starts to move to his right before firing to McColl Hardman who slides down to make the 15 yard catch then on the following play Gilbert fakes the give and goes to Calvin Ridley who gets two blocks and has nothing but green grass in front of him but he doesn't have the speed as Patrick Peterson tracks him down inside the five but not before a 52 yard gain gives Atlanta first and goal and with third and goal for from the two Gilbert throwing and goes to Austin Hooper who hangs on to the two yard touchdown catch and it's all Atlanta here as they take a 21 nothing lead so down 21 Arizona lets back up Isaac Spicer throw a pass but it's baby steps as the touch pass goes to Christian Kirk who jukes Desmond Trufant and is up the sideline and into Atlanta territory for a 34 yard gain so on the following play Cliff Kingsbury says it let him chuck it deep and you see why he wasn't passing as Donovan Culver skies up for the interception and everything clicking for the Falcons as their offense takes back over with a 21 nothing lead later in the quarter same score and up by 21 the one thing you don't want to do is throw it right to the defense Jonathan Jones picks off the bubble screen takes it to the house and all of a sudden the Cardinals have life as they make it 21 7 ensuing drive and Casey Rivers keeps the Falcons from going three and out picking up six yards on third and three next play Gilbert drops the throw and wants Kyle Wood but Hassan Reddick snatches it out of the air and the curse of the second quarter continues as Gilbert throws another interception and the Cardinals take over at the Falcons 37. Two plays later Spicer throwing and finds Andy Isabella for 15 yards and a first down inside the Atlanta 20. Then facing third and 10 Spicer throwing again and he's going to dump short to David Johnson who's wrapped up and tackled immediately for a gain of one. Jason Sanders is sent out his 34 yard field goal is up and good and all of a sudden 10 unanswered has Arizona down by 11. Ensuing drive third and 12 where Gilbert trying to make something happen goes deep but it's intercepted again. DJ Swearinger brings it back to the Atlanta 24 and almost dies laughing at the second quarter struggles of Ray Gilbert. So on the Cardinals first play Spicer finds Andy Isabella for 13 yards down to the Falcons 11. And two plays later it's Spicer throwing again and he goes to the end zone and has Josh Gordon for the 11 yard score and after leading 21-0, the Falcons head to the break with just a four-point lead. Cardinals get it to start the second half, and their momentum keeps rolling as Max Williams hangs on to the 16-yard catch to convert. Then on the following play, Falcons jump off sides, but it doesn't matter because Spicer has Christian Kirk for 18 more across midfield. Arizona facing third down again, but needing three. It's David Johnson picking up four to keep the drive alive. Two 
plays later and the chains keep moving as Spicer goes short to Max Williams for nine yards and another Cardinals first down. Then facing third down one more time, Spicer goes to tight end Chris Sanchez who looks like he has the first down but the broken tackle takes him back shy of the marker making it fourth and inches. Cardinals tuck their man marbles into their little red bodies and Jason Sanders connects on a 23 yard field goal cutting the Falcons lead to one. Arizona gets it right back and on third and 12 it's Donovan Culver screaming in for his first career sack and finally something for Atlanta to feel good about as they'll take back possession and maintain their one point lead. So Atlanta's turn and Ray Gilbert finally throws a pass to his own team hitting Calvin Ridley for 12. Three plays later third and two and Casey Rivers takes it up the middle bounces around and has just enough to convert. Two plays later this time Gilbert drops the throw and fires down the seam to Austin Hooper for an 18 yard gain. Then with second and 11 Gilbert throwing again and scrambles to his right but Buda Baker chases him down for the sack and a five yard loss. And on third and 16 Gilbert throwing and goes short to Austin Hooper on the crosser for just five yards to bring up fourth down. Out comes Roland Ford who easily makes the 30 yard field goal and the Falcons are finally back on the board as they push their lead to four. Arizona with a chance to take the lead and on their second play Spicer stands in and delivers to Andy Isabella for 18 yards and a Cardinals first down. Two plays later second down and Spicer stands in but has nowhere to throw and is going to be chased down by Solomon Thomas for the sack and the 10 yard loss on Thomas's third sack of the year leads to an Arizona punt. Fourth quarter now Cardinals have possession and are on the move as Spicer hits Andy Isabella for 11 yards and a first down. Five plays later Arizona across midfield but on third and eight Spicer looks to throw but down he goes as Donovan Culver takes him down for his second sack of the day and on fourth and 18 the Cardinals have no choice but to punt it away and after back and forth punts only five minutes to go now and Gilbert's throwing stands in and floats deep and he's got Calvin Ridley in stride and up the sideline for a 55 yard touchdown and the Falcons lead moves to 11 with just 502 remaining and facing fourth and two on the ensuing drive Falcons blitz and Spicer throws late to the sideline where David Johnson makes the catch but goes out of bounds shy of the marker the turnover on downs leads to a Falcons field goal Cardinals add a meaningless touchdown and it's six and one for Atlanta but not in the way they would have hoped after jumping out to a 21 nothing lead Ray Gilbert goes for 336 yards passing and four touchdowns but another three interceptions keeps Arizona in the game and is definite cause for concern heading into the Falcons week eight matchup with the Saints all right, so we get back in the win column, albeit in pretty ugly fashion. Again, things start out really well, and it looked like I was just going to blow them right out of their toaster, but then in the second quarter, again, it's mistake after mistake after mistake, and probably the only thing that saves me in that game is the fact that Kyler Murray got injured. But the first thing we have here for team activities is a dev trait reveal for wide receiver Kyle Woods, who was a third-round pick, and his dev trait is superstar X factor and that's pretty crazy to me I didn't think that there was any way that this is what he would be especially since he was a third round pick but this is huge given that we've lost Julio Jones for the year and will make the wide receiver position really interesting moving forward Woods's X factor ability is mossed which could also create some very crazy moments but should be pretty rare and then he currently has one superstar trait unlocked which is in out elite and his next ability will be unlocked when he hits an 80 overall but a great way to start the second half of the video and moving on to negotiations we had four players to deal with this week starting with free safety Corey Yates who was signed to a two-year 1.3 million dollar contract with 200k guaranteed Yates was an undrafted free agent and will continue to serve as a fairly solid and cheap backup to DeMonte Casey next up is another undrafted rookie in Sylvester Lambert who signs a two-year five million dollar deal with 1.5 million guaranteed and pretty much same thing here as with Yates he's a solid backup option that's very young and pretty cheap as well. Then following him was running back Marcus Green, who we did withdraw negotiations with. Green doesn't really see any carries, and the main reason he made the roster was because McCole Hardman was injured to start the year, and now with Julio Jones's injury, he's back to returning kicks, but I figure I could probably get an undrafted rookie or late-round pick to fill his role at a much cheaper price. And then lastly here is Brett Hundley, who is our backup quarterback, and I wouldn't have minded keeping him around, but he wanted almost $4 million a year, which isn't really that much, but Hundley also wasn't really my first 
first choice this past off season, and I feel like I can get something better to back up Ray Gilbert. Moving on to scouting, we have both a draft story and a draft tweet this week, but starting here with the story, which is headlined, Buchanan neutralizes Armstrong and reads, JT Armstrong had been terrorizing opposing offenses this season until he ran up against Jamar Buchanan this week. Buchanan was the key to Kansas's win. And then the draft tweet from Matt Miller also refers to this battle between Jamar Buchanan and JT Armstrong and reads, Buchanan is easily the best O-lineman in the country. Armstrong couldn't do anything against him. So moving to the draft board, Jamar Buchanan was one of the first players we scouted this season, but you can get another look at his grades at the top there. JT Armstrong, the player he shut down, wasn't scouted yet, but looks really good with three A-minus grades. Then below those two, we have Nick Williamson, a second round projection, but first round true talent corner from Arizona. And then lastly is Leslie Scott, a fourth round projection and second round true talent from North Carolina. And then lastly here for Team Stuff is player upgrades, where we start with the kicker, Roland Ford, who upgrades his power arc archetype and receives plus one to awareness and plus two to his kick accuracy which doesn't really make much sense but next up is wide receiver Katie Cannon who gets five attribute upgrades which are plus two to both awareness and catch in traffic and then one point increases to both deep and medium route running as well as his spectacular catch Following him is rookie tight end Ronald Baldwin, who becomes a 59 overall with plus three to his medium route running, plus two to his catching and pass block, and then one point increases to his short route running and stiff arm ratings. And then lastly here is backup center Chandler Miller, who goes up to a 58 overall with a two point increase to his pass block finesse and a one point increase to his pass block power. But finally, time to go around the league where the Colts take down the Niners on Thursday night. Ravens, Eagles, and Cowboys all defend home turf while the Patriots and Seahawks win on the road. Titans beat the Dolphins. Saints and Bills tie in Buffalo. And the Rams win 24-21 in Jacksonville. Bengals get a win over the Packers. Browns destroy the Raiders. And the Bears beat the Bucks on Sunday night. Then wrapping up the week was Matt Ryan and the Beats suffering a 41-17 thrashing at the hands of the Texans. Taking a look at the AFC standings in the East, the Patriots lead the way at 5-2 with Miami a game back while the Jets are 3-3-1 and and a Bills tie moves them to 1-4-1 and and still in last place. The North is still all Browns as they move to 6-1 and and hold a two and a half game lead over the 3-3 Ravens. Bengals are three back at 3-4 and while the last place Steelers are 2-5 and and four games out of first place. Jacksonville falls this week, but with a 5-2 record, still holds a fairly comfortable lead of first place in the South over 3-3-1 Houston, 3-3 Tennessee, and 3-4 Indianapolis. And in the AFC West, the 5-1 Broncos had the week off and were able to watch everybody else in their division lose as the Beats fell to 4-2, the Chiefs fell to 4-3, and and the Raiders called the Browns daddy as they fell to 2-4. Meanwhile, on the NFC side, the Cowboys have won two in a row and lead the East at 4-2. Giants are a game back at 3-3, with the Eagles a game and a half back of them at 2-5, and five, with the 1-5 and five Redskins bringing up the rear. The Vikings are running away with the North as they sit atop the division with a 5-1 and one record and the second-place Bears sitting at 3-4. and four. Meanwhile, the 1-5 and five Packers and 0-6 and Lions continue their terrible starts to Season 3. We get back on track and move to 6-1 and one and lead the South while the Saints tie now puts them a game and a half back at 4-2-1. and one. Panthers are 3-3 three and three in third place while the last-place Buccaneers are 0-7. Oh then wrapping up here with the NFC West, the Rams and Seahawks are tied for first place at 4-2 and two, with the 49ers a game back at 3-3 three and three, and the Cardinals still very much in the race at 3-4. and four. The AFC Offensive Player of the Week award goes to Jets running back Le'Veon Bell. The ninth year running back averaged over 15 yards per carry, breaking 10 tackles and amassing 186 yards rushing and two touchdowns on just 12 carries. Bell added four catches for 47 yards as his Jets came up just short, losing 33-28 to the Patriots. On the NFC side, it's Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz taking home the award. Wentz completed 20 of his 26 passes for 308 yards and four touchdowns, which was good for a near-perfect 155.1 passer rating. He also added 14 yards on the ground to help lead his Eagles to a 31-24 win over the Giants. The defensive award for the AFC goes to Tyquan Lewis, a.k.a. Mr. Thursday Night. Lewis notched 11 tackles with one going for a loss and sacked Jimmy Garoppolo twice as Lewis wins his second Player of the Week award this season with both coming after games on Thursday night.
And for the NFC, it goes to our very own Donovan Culver. The 2020 third round pick wins his first ever player of the week award after doing just about everything against the Cardinals as he tallied nine tackles, two sacks, and made an interception as you saw earlier in our 34-27 win against the Cardinals. Moving on to the leaders, Ray Gilbert continues to lead all passers with 2,178 yards passing. And then Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield takes over both the passing touchdowns lead with 20 and now has a league best 131 Point eight passer rating. The rushing leaders look the same as last week with the Giants Saquon Barkley leading in both rushing yards with 845 and yards per carry with his crazy eight yard average. And then our rookie running back Casey Rivers is tied for tops in the league with the Falcons rookie record seven rushing touchdowns. We finally have a break from the Jamison Crowder jackpot in the receiving leaders as Sammy Watkins is now tops in the league with 44 catches. Crowder also loses the receiving yards lead to Adam Humphreys and his 657, but Crowder does remain tied for the league lead with six touchdown catches. Then lastly for the defense, we have Deion Jones back and leading in tackles with 62. The Browns' Miles Garrett takes the sacks lead with 10 and a half on the year, and for the third consecutive week, Marcus May is atop the interception leaderboard. Kicking off week eight will be Minnesota at Carolina on Thursday night. We play host to the second place Saints in a big NFC South game. Raiders head to the Big Apple while the two and five Steelers head to Cincinnati to face the two and four Bengals. Buccaneers look for their first win in Philadelphia. Cardinals get Kyler Murray back and head to Houston. Big AFC East game as the Patriots travel to Miami and face the Dolphins. And then we have the Music City Miracle rematch with Tennessee at Buffalo. Huge AFC West game as the Beats and Broncos play for first place. Lions travel to San Francisco looking for their first win while the Seahawks and Rams play in Los Angeles. Then on Sunday night, it's the 1-5 Packers facing Lamar Jackson and the 3-3 three three Ravens. And wrapping up the week is the Redskins heading to Dallas to take on the 4-2 Cowboys on Monday night. Bears, Browns, Colts, Jags, Chiefs, and Jets all get to take the week off with buys. But that's going to do it, guys. We pick up another win, albeit in ugly fashion. But as Dominic Toretto once said, winning's winning. So we take our 6-1 and one record back home to play the Saints, who will be without Alvin Kamara. And with a win there, we take pretty firm control of the division lead. So a big game next video. But as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you enjoyed what you watched and saw in today's video.